Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial, and today we've got a follow-up video on the nuclear keys. So one of the very prevalent uh, comments about the nuclear keys for Battleship New Jersey was it's really weird that the two key slots are right next to each other. So a single person can do both keys. Uh, and usually with nuclear weapons, there, there's some sort of double redundancy and another key slot that's far enough away that uh, one person can't do it alone. And that is the case for Battleship New Jersey. And in today's video, we're going to show you where the second key slot is. But first, we have learned some extra information on how these keys were used, where they were stored. And this is all thanks to Lieutenant Troy Mellon, who served on the battleship Missouri from 1986 till 1988. He was the GM division officer and served as one of the missile officers on board battleship Missouri. And his job would have been to ha hold the Tomahawk enable inhibit key. So you've got the sailor sitting here programming the Tomahawk, the officer, would be behind them. In wartime, they would wear the key on a chain around their neck, and as they're relieved, they pass that off to the missile officer who is relieving them. In peacetime, this would live in a safe in CEC. Now, this is the standard operating procedure for USS Missouri. Uh, it could theoretically be different for New Jersey, but the odds are, since those two ships shared the same pier in Long Beach, and there was a lot of discussion back and forth among their crew members, that it was likely the same. Um, there may, it is more likely that there would be differences in the standard operating procedures between the Pacific Fleet battleships Missouri and New Jersey and the Atlantic Fleet battleships Iowa and Wisconsin, which may have developed different cultures around these things. So, the Tomahawk Enable Inhibit Key is for firing any Tomahawk missile. So this has to be in the key slot and turn to enable to be able to fire. The nuclear permission to fire key obviously is only used when you're firing a nuclear missile. These two keys normally live in the safe in the captain's cabin. And uh, the captain on the Iowa class battleships have a large safe in their office. On New Jersey, it's in the uh, in-port cabin sitting area by the dining room table slash uh, air conditioning unit in the corner. On Missouri, it's in the captain's uh, in-port cabin stateroom near the bed. So they get installed in slightly different places, but there's a similar safe in each one, and that's where these keys likely would have been. And if the authorization to use these keys comes in, the captain retrieves them and uh, presumably hands them off to the missile officer to use. But these are not the only keys, and we're going to go there in just a second. But first, the Tomahawk cruise missiles were originally designed to be used with vertical launch tubes on ships like the second batch of Ticonderogas and the Arleigh Burke destroyers, which are coming out in the late 80s, early 90s. The Navy wanted to get these to sea faster, so they originally developed a way to put these on some of the older ships, such as the Virginia-class cruisers, the Spruance-class destroyers, and other large ships like that. Each of those ships could hold two armored box launchers. Each one's a quadruple, so eight missiles total on their fantail. When the Iowa-class battleships were chosen to be reactivated, they obviously have significantly more reserve of buoyancy. And so there was room for eight armored box launchers. However, the firing setup is the same on these ships as it was for the older ships. So you could only fire from one battery at a time. And the Iowa-class battleships have four batteries, whereas, say, a Spruance-class destroyer was only uh, retrofitted to have one battery of two launchers. So our batteries are Port Forward, which has those two armored box launchers, Starboard Forward, which has those two, Port Aft, and Starboard Aft. So whichever one of those you are using at any given time is what is linked to these consoles. These consoles are specifically for firing the Tomahawks. Meanwhile, there are two other consoles in that corner, 
which are for controlling the tomahawks when they are in flight. Lieutenant Mellon told us that in the tomahawk equipment rooms, there was another key slot called the whistle or whistle uh, weapon safety interlock W S uh, I L. And just like he said, in a place I've walked by a thousand times, you can see that we've got more key slots. So this is your second key slot for if you're going to fire a nuclear tomahawk. You've got one on the actual launch console and probably about 200 feet away in the tomahawk equipment room, we've got these key boxes. All four tomahawk equipment rooms, remember one per battery, uh, Iowa class battleships have four batteries. If you were on a smaller ship that had armored box launchers, you would probably only have one of these rooms, but we've got one for each battery. Um, the after two only have a single one of these. The forward two each have two of these, which leads us to believe with six boxes, only the forward six ABLs could carry nuclear warheads, which means we could only carry 28 total instead of the 36. Oh no, um, almost certainly was never that much, if any. We could not find any keys that were labeled WSIL. We did find, and remember that is uh, how they were labeled on Missouri. They were probably labeled the same here, but you know, there could be a difference. Um, also probably worth pointing out, all of the Tomahawk keys are the same. So you could take the key from this ship and go and plug it in in Wisconsin's and so on and so forth. Um, so we couldn't find the tags that said WSIL, which might mean that the Navy had them or might mean they were called something different on this ship. We did find two keys, uh, LSU launch enable and uh, WCIP, which were in the same collection of keys for the, the gunnery department keys. And these types of keys do fit in the lock, but they don't turn. So it was probably a key that looked similar to, to this, um, but it seems like that those were either not left with the ship or we haven't found them yet. So for those of you who are asking, well, shouldn't there be two separate uh, places to enable the keys? There were. This is an interlock that has to be removed before the signal to launch can go to the Tomahawk. Likewise, on the launch console before you can send the signal to launch, you have to be both enabled and have the nuclear key in there. So remember to like, share, and subscribe so that you get notified when we post other videos as we learn more information about the potential nuclear armaments of Battleship New Jersey. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State, also from a number of other businesses and private individuals like yourselves. We really appreciate your support. There's a link in the description below for more ways you can donate to support the museum, which gives us the time to go around and look for cool objects like these uh, and test them and, and then film it so you guys can see. We really appreciate your support. And there's a link in the description below if you'd like to continue donating to support the museum. You can also support us by liking, sharing, and subscribing so more people find out about us in the channel. Thanks for watching.